Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Alicia Beanie, which you can see here in front of you and my sample here. Uh, and then I'm showing you without a pom-pom so you can see what the top of the hat looks like. Now the Alicia Beanie is a textured beanie that uses the falling leaf stitch. So it is absolutely gorgeous. It's worked from the brim up and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the adult size so with a circumference of about 20 to 22 inches the beanie does not have any slouch when it is worn but I'll let you know how you can kind of adjust it to your own fit uh, later on here in the video today you're going to be needing about 246 yards or one ball of the color theory yarn by two of wands and lion brand yarn this is a worsted weight acrylic yarn if you're looking for something to substitute uh, and it's a little bit on the lighter side in my opinion if you're looking uh, for a different yarn to use you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and a copy of the free written pattern which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com so thank you so much for joining me direct links to that written pattern is in the description while you're here, I invite you to look around. There's many other crochet beanie patterns uh, and other patterns as well and stitch tutorials all free. So don't forget to subscribe. The channel is updated weekly. Now our pattern today is worked from the brim up and it is worked in rows. Uh, the brim is worked in rows. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain and your foundation chain is going to be a total of 13 stitches if you would like to make your brim shorter or longer you're welcome to adjust that number to your personal preference uh, no multiples needed Thirteen. once you have your foundation chain worked you're going to start by working a slip stitch into the second chain, so count in one, two, the second chain from your hook, and then slip stitch into each stitch all the way across. If you would like, if you're not a fan of working a slip stitch brim, you're welcome to use single crochet or half double crochet instead of slip stitches. Otherwise, you're just going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. You'll have a total of 12 stitches at the end of this row one. At the end of row one, you're going to chain one and turn your work. We're now going to continue working slip stitches, this time working in the back loop only. So looking at the top of your stitch, you will see a loop that is closest to you and you will see one that is further away this one that is further away is your back loop only so you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch or single crochet or half double crochet and then continue working in the back loop only and slip stitch in each stitch all the way across when you come to the end of your row two, you're once again going to chain one and turn your work. I always find these first few rows just a little bit finicking when you're working the slip stitches, but it does get easier as you go and you have a little bit more to hang on to and your stitches are a little bit looser in the later rows so all the way across when you come across chain one turn your work you're now going to repeat row two so slip stitch working in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across you're going to repeat that row two until your work from the beginning measures about 16 to 17 inches and that's when it's just lying flat not stretched when it's stretched it should 
fit comfortably a rounded adult head 20 to 22 inches. So go ahead, work your 16 to 17 inches and then meet me back here. When you have worked 16 to 17 inches, this is what your band looks like and it should have a fairly good stretch to it. You're then going to fold the band over so that the two shorter ends meet. Be careful not to twist it. And you're going to work a slip stitch seam. When I'm working my slip stitch seam, I'm going to insert my hook under the back loop only of the first side and go across, pick up the other side, so I'm working through both thicknesses, and again, work it, pick up that back loop only, and then slip stitch. You want to slip stitch in each side, uh, in each stitch, through both thicknesses, all the way across, just being careful not to skip or work into any of the stitches twice. This is going to seam these two pieces together to make your brim. So all the way across. I just have a few stitches left. Once you come all the way across, you're going to turn your brim so that it's right side out and you're now ready to start the body of your hat. For the first round of our hat body, this is worked in rounds, you're going to chain one, and you're now going to evenly work 72 half double crochet stitches all the way around. So when I'm working, I'm just inserting my hook wherever it feels comfortable, just kind of near the top of my brim, not too far down. Uh, and just working half double crochets. If it helps, you can place a stitch marker about halfway around and work half of your half double crochets on one side, half on the other, just to help spread them out a little bit more even. When you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first half double crochet stitch. At the end of round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch. I'll just go back here quickly. Join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. You're then going to chain one. For the next two rounds, rounds two and three, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and single crochet into each stitch all the way around. At the end of the round, join with a slip stitch in your first stitch, chain one and repeat. So you want to work two rounds of single crochet stitches for rounds two and three and meet me back here. At the end of round three, you've worked your two rounds of single crochet stitches. You're going to chain two, and this does not count as a stitch. You're then going to, for round four, work one double crochet into each of the first three stitches. So one at the base of your starting chain, and then each of the next two stitches. You're then going to work one 
leaf stitch around the post of the single crochet two rows below. So this is the one of the row below, two rows below brings you down here. To work your leaf stitch you're going to yarn over, insert your hook around the post from the front through to the back, out through the front of that single crochet two rows below, yarn over and draw up a loop to the height of the double crochet stitch. You're then going to repeat, yarn over, insert your hook around the post of the stitch two rows below, yarn over and draw up a loop. You're then going to yarn over and pull through four of the loops on your hook. You'll have two loops remaining, yarn over and pull through those remaining two loops. You're then going to continue working and work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're skipping that stitch that's in behind the leaf stitch and working one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're then going to work a leaf stitch around the post of the stitch two rows below. So yarn over, insert your hook around the post, yarn over, drop a loop, pull it up to the height of the double crochet, do that twice, then yarn over and pull through four loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. Once again, skipping that stitch in behind the leaf stitch, work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around ending with a leaf stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round four you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, which is that double crochet stitch, and you'll have ended on a leaf stitch. For round five, we're going to chain one, single crochet into the first stitch, and single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round five, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You're going to chain two. This does not count as a stitch. For round six, we're going to begin by working a double crochet into our first stitch. You're then going to work a leaf stitch around the post of the next stitch two rows below. So this is the next double crochet stitch and it should be the second double crochet of that set of three. So working down around the post of that next double crochet stitch two rows below, work one leaf stitch. You're then going to skip the stitch up top that's behind the leaf stitch and work a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. We're now going to repeat, work a leaf stitch around the post of the next double crochet stitch two rows below, two rounds below, and work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. When you come all the way around at the end of round six, you're going to have two stitches remaining. Work one double crochet into each of those final two stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, which is that first double crochet stitch. 
You're then going to, for the rest of your beanie, going to repeat rounds three, four, five, and six for a total of four more times. So your round three started with a single crochet, and then you worked a round of leaf stitches, single crochet, and then a round of more leaf stitches. So repeat rounds three, four, five, and six four more times and then you're going to meet me back here. Once you have finished your repeats and you've worked to the end of round 22, repeating rounds 3, 4, 5, and 6, you're going to once more repeat round uh, 5. So you're going to work one more round of single crochet stitches and you're then going to fasten off leaving a long tail. For your long tail, I recommend leaving about 15 to 20 inches. This is what your hat looks like from the bottom up through to the top. Fasten off leaving a long tail and you're then going to uh, put that long tail onto a yarn needle. We're going to use it to sew the top of our hat closed. So what we're going to do is taking that long tail, you're going to weave it in and out through the tops of your stitches of your final round 23. So I'm inserting my hook basically in the same place that I would have inserted my crochet hook if I was working into the stitches. So just simply weave that long tail in and out through that top round. I find it best if you're inserting your needle in and out through the spaces and not through the yarn itself. It, uh, not through the strand of yarn. It will make it a little bit easier when we come to pull it closed here at the end and there'll be a little bit less resistance. all the way around. Once you come around, you're going to very carefully pull the yarn through so that it pulls the top of your hat closed. You want to do this gently. You don't want the yarn to break and you're just pulling it through. Once it's as tight as you would like, my opening is still about an inch and a half wide, you're going to take your needle and push it through that opening into the middle of your hat and turn your hat right side or inside out. You can then tighten it a little bit more if you need to. You're now going to take your needle and yarn and simply sew the top of the hat opening closed. So simply sew across that smaller opening in your hat. I'm doing this on the inside just in case there is a little bit of a seam. You don't want that on the outside of your hat. So all the way across. When you come across, I like to tie a little bit of a knot just to make sure that my end is secure. You're then going to tuck in your end.
fasten off, turn your hat once again, right side out. And that is your Alicia Beanie. You can leave it as is, or if you would like, add a pom-pom to the top. It's really up to you, but that's it. So thank you so much for joining me on how to make the Alicia Beanie. Enjoy, and if you happen to make it and share it on social media, be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet so that I can come and enjoy it. Until we see you again, happy crocheting. Bye. Thank you.